have one more thing to show you. Well, not one more thing, but one more thing to show you. And let me move this out of the way. So let me just start this off by saying, as soon as I start this, I know the reaction I'm going to get. People are going to go, Missy, what are you doing? Did you not do your research on Disney pins? Yes, I did. I did. I just got excited. Okay. So I know that if you buy pins on eBay and you see that it's like 50 pins for 20 bucks or something like that, they say don't buy them because they're all going to be scrapper pins. They're all going to be fake pins. So I've been talking to my husband and my mom about this Disney pin thing and how I'm going to start this collection. I can't wait to go back to the park so that I can trade. And so my mom and I yesterday went to the mall and we, there's a store in our local mall that's just like an antique store where vendors can buy, you know, kind of like booths or different areas to sell their stuff. Um, I was actually looking for like playing cards, deck cards, and but of course, all I'm finding is like baseball cards. But any any time I saw that something that looked like cards, I went over to it. So I go, we're like, this is like the end of the store. We've already gone through the entire store. And I see one other thing that looked like cards. And again, it's probably all playing cards, but I go over there anyway. And I see a sign that says Disney pin lot. So he had a couple racks of Disney pins. And I got super excited. Now, they are not um, on, like, the traditional board, right? He had his own boards that you'll see. Um, so that's red flag number one, right? Obviously, I know that. Um, red flag number two is that you really could not investigate the pins. It, they were, you know, it was sealed in plastic. You couldn't see the back of the pins. Um, you know, I was trying my best to feel them to see if I could figure out if they were fake or not, but it was a little, little hard to tell in the packaging. Um, red flag number two was obviously the price, right? So he would have ones that had one pin on them and it was one pin for a dollar 75. And then he would have one that had two pins on it and that was two pins for two seventy nine, and then three pins for three seventy nine or whatever it was. So obviously you would never find pins for that cheap if they were real. But with that said, most of his pins were cast member pins, like hidden Mickey pins, ones that you can't buy that you can really only get by trading with a cast member in the park. So I thought, well, that's probably why they're cheaper because they're that and they're probably going to be scrappers. So, but I was still so excited that I didn't really care and they were really cheap. So I thought, I'm just going to get some because I'm just really excited about it. And who knows, maybe some of them are real. And I figured if they're not, this would be a good way for me to see pins up close and personal to see what makes them fake or real. And so I'm going to show you the pins that I got. And I will say I bought 13 pins total. So I spent about $18 for 13 pins. And I think only five out of the 13 are fake. So I still got eight pins that I believe to be real. So I went on, I think it's DisneyPinPicks.com um, to search the pins to see if I could find, you know, what makes them counterfeit pins. Now, out of the five that I researched, only one actually gave me a description on that, you know, that would let me know whether it was fake or real. And I, so I was able to determine, to determine for sure that one was definitely fake. The other four that I have did not give me a description. So I couldn't tell, um, you know, from the back or the front, what would make the pen I had real or fake. I still kind of think that they are, but I will try and show you as up close as I can what the pen looks like. And if anybody knows for sure or can tell me what would make that specific pin real or fake, that would be wonderful. Um, the other thing I would love to know, if you can let me know in the comments, I think I saw in a video somewhere that if you end up getting what you think to be fake pins from a cast member or whatever, from trading, that you can take it to guest services in the park and say, hey, I got a fake pin, and they will take it because obviously Disney wants to eliminate as many of those as possible, even though it's going to, it's an impossible task. But I heard that they will take your fake pin and replace it with a real one, 
probably not that same exact pin, but it'll still be a real pin. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, if you can let me know, because I obviously, if these pins that I got, these five, if they are fakes, I don't want to trade them because I don't want to keep that cycle going. But if I can take them to the parks and get real ones in place of them, then I'm going to hang on to them so that I can do that. So let me know if you know if that is true or not or what my options are. But now I will show you what I got. So this one was a two pins for two seventy nine. So you can see they're on his own handmade thing. And so I was like, mm, I don't know about this. This first one, this is the first one I looked at as well. This Alice pin is real. It's a real pin. Um, the feeling of it is good. So they say a lot of times if you feel the pin and it's too smooth, like you can't really feel the lines as much, that it could be fake. Um, the other thing that they said um, is if it has a matte finish, if it doesn't have like that glossy quality to it that you can see here, even just in the camera, that it's probably fake. The other way for sure is to check some of the things on the back. So the front and if the, if the edges feel rough, if they're not smooth, all of that felt good. So then the only other thing I could do was to check the back. I checked the back on the Disney uh, Pin Picks website and everything matched. And not only that, but this is a Shanghai Disneyland, uh, Shanghai Disney Resort pin. Uh, so that to me was kind of exciting. And, uh, and I think she's kind of cute. So I don't really know if I would ever trade her, but here's an up close of the Alice pin that I got. Excited to have that. Um, now this next one, I actually couldn't find on the Disney pin picks, but I also didn't really know how to search for it. Maybe I just needed a better search, um, thing to do, but this is a, like an, an ear hat, not a headband, an ear hat pin has Minnie Mouse bow tie on it and it has Mickey on it. It looks like it's like a Mouseketeer, like a Mickey Mouse Club thing. Um, so number one, just looking at it right away, it has a matte finish. It's not glossy. So that was red flag number one. Um, I kind of feel one sharp edge to it, which makes me think obviously fake. Um, and the Mickey face doesn't look as defined to me. So let me show you the front of this one as best I can. So of course you're getting a glossy finish on some of those things, but I'm, I'm telling you when you feel it, it's a matte, it's a matte finish pen, even though it's hard to tell in here. Uh, the other reason I thought it was fake, they say something about the Mickeys on the back. Um, if they don't seem to, you know, line up or go, you know, consecutive the way that they should, that, that it could be fake. Um, the other thing is on the stamp on the back, if you can't read it, like if, if the letters mush together that much that you can't read that it says Disney pin trading, it's probably from, from a mold that they made and it's a fake pin and you cannot read that it says Disney pin trading on the back here. It also says Disney China, um, which that doesn't always mean anything, but kind of hard to tell. You probably won't even be able to see that, but you, you cannot read it. And they're tiny prints, so they're hard to read in the first place, but compared to the other pins I have, you cannot read this. So I am, even though I wasn't able to look this one up, just based on looking at it, the quality is not the same. Uh, so I am 100% certain this is a fake pin. Um, if anybody has this pin, if you want to maybe let me know what yours looks like, just so I can compare it and be 100% sure, but I pretty much feel 100% sure already that this is fake. So... This is going to go in a separate pile of fakers, um, so hopefully I'm able to do something with those. Again, please let me know if you know for sure if you're able to trade these in at, the, at guest services for real pins. So there's that one. This one, this one I'm questioning too, so if anybody knows for sure. This is an older pin. Um, it's a ballerina mini. It's on a gold finish, and it kind of looked like the one on the website was on a silver. Now, I don't know if that's maybe a newer version of the pin, um, but the feel and look of it on the front was good. So it made me kind of think maybe this is real. However, on the back, you can see that it says Disney pin trading. I think it says 2008, so it's not really that old in, in terms of pin trading, but it doesn't have any of the Mickeys on the back. Now, I don't know if... If, you know, and when that started with the, you know, the Mickeys on the, the whole back of the pin, 
but this one does not have one. And I don't know if that necessarily makes this a fake or real pin. Um, regardless, I kind of don't care <laughs> for this particular one because this isn't one that I would trade. Um, and it's not one that I necessarily care if it's a real or a fake one to keep. Um, obviously I'm a dancer, I'm a dance teacher and it's a ballerina mini. So it's just one that I'm going to save for myself anyway. And if I'm saving it for myself and just because it is what it is, I don't care if it's fake or real, but I am still curious just so that I can get more knowledgeable in Disney pin. So if you know what the deal is with this pin, let me know. Again, I couldn't find, other than a picture, I couldn't find a really good description on the Disney Pin Picks website for this particular pin. So just let me know uh, what you think about that one. Now, I kind of knew right away when I saw this. First of all, I got really excited real fast, and then I realized, don't get too excited. This is definitely a fake pin. So this will help, I think, educate some more people like myself on these pins. Now, luckily enough, I just got this same pin in my box. Okay. So let me get that. Where'd it go? <laughs> okay. So I was hoping I was going to be able to check this pin with, um, other ones that I knew I had gotten, but now that I got literally the same exact pin, I can definitely check. So here's this pin, right? This is the one I just got in my box. Okay. This is one that I got at the store. Now look at them side by side. They are not the same. The fake one has more green to it, and I guarantee you it probably doesn't glow in the dark. And it's kind of hard to tell, but the green that they put on it kind of bled into the side of the frame. I really don't even know if you can see it. Up by the umbrella, up here, it kind of... Like the green bled into that and that's kind of what made me go, you know, there's no way that's a Disney pin. They wouldn't have done that. Um, the other thing is the back of the pin. It's very faded in the back. Now the back of these pins are very different in terms of the way that they feel compared to some others. But here's the real pin. You can see the back. It's um, made well enough that you can read it pretty well. Here's the fake one you can barely see it. Yeah. So education 101. So I'd be interested to see again, if I can take this fake pen and get a real one in place of it. So there's that. Uh, this is, this one is real. I checked this one out. Um, so you can see the hidden Mickey up top by his ear. So again, this is like a cast member pen that you would get when you would be trading in the park. Now this one, I'm not like in love with it. I, I, I like Mickey, but I like some other ones better. So this is probably one that I will definitely be trading in the parks in the future. The main reason I got this particular uh, pack was because there's a Shelly May. And if you don't know who Shelly May is, it is Duffy's little girlfriend. She is so cute. I just love it so much. Um, and I'm not trading this because I think she's just way too cute. This is also from Disney Shanghai Resort, um, and I checked this one out, and it is definitely a real pin, um, so I'm so excited to have her in my personal collection. Uh, this is another one. You'll have to, maybe somebody knows exactly where this is from. My guess is that it's a Pirates of the Caribbean thing because it's a skull and crossbones, but the coloring kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, again, this is, this is a real one. Um, I don't think, yeah, it's not from like necessarily like a resort or anything like that, but I think it's a Pirates of the Caribbean pin, but I don't know. I'm not in love with this one either. Again, I bought that pack of three just for Shelly Mae. Um, so this will definitely be one that I would be trading, but I'd be interested, interested to know if it's definitely a Pirates of the Caribbean one. Again, I'm thinking yes, but it could be from something else. I'm just not 100% sure. So let me know if you know. Let's see what else do we got. Now, here's another faker. I would, This was the only one that I was actually 100% able to detect via the um, the Disney Pin Picks website. I think it's an acorn. It's a hidden Mickey one. 
So if you check this out, the coloring, uh, the, ye the shade of yellow basically is different from what actually is supposed to be. So that's clue number one. And the finish isn't quite what it should be. So that's clue number two. Now this one didn't have any rough edges and I guess not all of the fake ones would necessarily. So um, that can throw you off sometimes. Um, and the back, I think on this one is supposed to have the Mickeys on the back and it does not. Um, or I don't remember anymore what it was. I, oh, you know what it was? I think it was the order. The order of the things down here was not what it was supposed to be. So that's how we were able to detect that this is definitely a fake pin. Again, would love to know if I can trade this in at guest services, yay or nay. But these, I think I'm actually going to keep because I think they're really cute. And if I ever see any on a cast member, as long as I'm not getting a fake one, um, I would probably trade some of my other ones to complete the set. It comes in a set of five. This is number four out of five. It's a Hidden Mickey Mad Tea Party pin. Uh, this one is really super cute. This is a real one. I was able to check this one out. Um, but I think they're really cute. So I'm probably not trading these, but I will trade for the others because I think it'd just be cute to have the set of five of those. So there's that. Uh, here's one I've seen a bunch of people trading, um, at the parks, another Disney cast member, Hidden Mickey one. Uh, this one was very easy to to find since I, I've seen it so many times online already. So I was able to definitely authenticate this one. Um, I think it's a pineapple is what it's supposed to be. I'll probably end up trading this one though at some point. Um, but I've seen it a bunch of places, so I'm sure I can trade it for something else. And the last thing that I bought there was another pack of three. So this is a, a chaser pin. Uh, the silver pins, I don't know why they're called chaser per se, but they're called chaser pins. This is a dog bone. Um, it says it's two out of five, so there must be others to this one. And I'm glad I looked this up because I couldn't tell just from the little picture what dog this was. And it, it looks like it's actually Bolt is what it looks like from me looking at it online. But there's that. Not like in love with this pin any either because you really can't tell who the dog is. So maybe that's the point of the chaser pin. I don't know. You can let me know what the, the purpose of that is. Um, but I'll probably just end up trading this one. Um, I'm not in love with it. Again, I really just want to keep pins that I think, you know, look really cute. And I'm like, meh, on that one. Um, but the reason I really got this one was because there was another Mad Tea Party one. So this is number two out of five. It is the yellow one. So I already have two out of the five. Um, so again, I will trade probably for the others, but I will not probably trade these. And this last one, again, I'm pretty sure is fake, but I didn't really know what it was. I know it's one of those vinylmation things, but I could not, I don't know if it's supposed to be Donald or what it is. So I had a hard time looking it up, but again, I can pretty much already tell from the way it feels. It has that matte finish again. Um, that I kind of feel like this might be fake. So if you know what this is actually is, if you could let me know, that way I can look it up. But again, I'm pretty sure that this is probably a fake pin. And even if it wasn't, I'm not in love with it, so I would have ended up trading it. But again, let me know um, if it's real or fake and, and that kind of thing. So there's that. Now, when I told my mom that I was really excited about this pin trading thing, She's like, well, I think we have some Disney pins. I said, Mom, I don't think we have some Disney pins. Well, we did. Um, so this first one is not a pin trader, but I did actually find it on the Disney Pin Picks website. Um, and there are people that seem to want to collect older pins from before the pin trading era began. So I literally just typed in Happy Holidays 1992, and this pin came up. Um, so this is not a pin trader, but I just thought it was nice to show you guys, you know, that I have a really old pin from before, you know, any of this started. Um, my mom loves Christmas and she liked always going to the Christmas shop that was at the then called Marketplace or Downtown Disney. And um, so she probably got it there. 
Um, but I mean, you can see it's, it's old. It doesn't even have the Mickey back. It has a traditional back, just says Disney on it. Um, but it's a really old pin and this is something I probably would never part with. Um, it's just, it's a nice commemorative pin. So, but it's going to go on my board because it's, it's part of my collection. So I wanted to show you guys that. And some other ones I have here. Um, I have three of these cause there were three of us that did this. Um, again, not a commemorative one. I'm sure there's people out there that collect things like this for some reason, but when I was younger, we did the Keys to the Kingdom tour at Magic Kingdom where they take you, um, some places underground and they, to the Utilidors and they show you how, um, kind of like the inner workings of the whole thing. It was a pretty expensive tour even at that time. Um, but it was kind of almost an all day thing. They gave you lunch, um, but I really enjoyed it because for me, I loved the backstage aspect. I was always fascinated by how they make this stuff happen, um, how they make the magic happen for everybody. So they gave you one of these pins to commemorate you going on the tour. So this I'm definitely putting on my pin board just because it's so cute and it's a nice collection to have. And I'm sure there's lots of other people in the world that have these pins. I'm sure maybe they changed them over the years. Maybe they look different now. Again, we went on this tour, this particular tour a very long time ago. Um, but you know, again, this isn't something I would ever trade anybody for anything and it's not a pin trader. Um, but it's just a nice commemorative pin to have to remember something special. So the last one I have, I have seen people um, I think on the Disney pin picks that are looking for these particular pins, not sure why that it, I don't know why you would want this kind of pin when you didn't do this event. But, um, and again, at the time I got this pin, I had no idea that it was actually a pin trader, but it does say, does have the pin trading logo on the back. It says 2002. And I know for a hundred percent sure that this is a real pin. It is from a old program that Disney used to do called Magic Music Days. I think now it's just called like Disney Performing Arts something. I don't know. Um, but Magic Music Days was the program that they had for, um, for children, uh, dance studios, uh, high school bands, that kind of thing to come and perform at Disney. And we were fortunate enough, the first time we did it was in 1997, I think I was in like fourth grade, and we performed at the Magic Kingdom. And we performed on, I think it was called the Galaxy, no, no, it was called the Tomorrowland Stage. And it was uh, actually where they have some kind of like dance party thing now. Um, but initially, it was literally just there for these type of events. And um, so we performed there in 1997. In 1999, we went back, we performed on that same stage. We also went to Universal Studios. They had a similar type program, um, but that one you just dance like on the street. And so we did both of those. In 2001, we went back to Disney um, and performed at that same spot that was there. But then we also went on the Disney cruise and we did an impromptu performance the first night that we sailed away. They do like a welcome party or something that night. And they saw that we, you know, we all came on with our dance studio jackets and they asked us, you know, you know, why are you here? And they said, well, we just performed at Magic Kingdom. They said, well, would you like to do a little performance for us on the pool deck tonight? So that was such an unplanned, awesome thing to do. I don't know that any other groups got to do that at that point, but it was not planned. Um, we didn't have our costumes. We just wore our jackets, but we gave them our music and they introduced us partway through the party. They made a space for us, like literally on the pool deck. The pool was covered. That's where we danced on top of it. And, um, it was just, it was just really, really cool. It's one of those things you'll always remember. So again, um, it's a different name now. Uh, it was called Magic Music Days. I think they still use this same logo though, but this is a Disney Magic Music Days pin. Uh, we got it. This one says 2002, but I wasn't there in 2002. I was there in 2001 and then 2003. So my guess is that I got this the last time I was there in 2003, but you can see on the back, it is a, a Disney official pin trader. But again, this is never one that I would ever trade because it commemorates my performance in, in Disney world. And so that is my Disney merchandise and pin haul, mostly a pin haul. Um, so now I will show you my Disney pin board. 
uh, as much as I have so far. It's a small collection, but I think for actually not having gone and done any pin trading, it's a pretty decent collection so far. I'm going to try not to get too crazy with it, but I will admit I'm pretty obsessed. So definitely every couple months you're going to see me unboxing some pins because I already have a whole bunch in my wish list um, on my Disney Shop Disney Parks app. So <clears throat> can't help myself. Okay, everyone, here is my very small completed pin board. <laughs> But it's a good start. It's a good start. So here it is. I bought this at Hobby Lobby just because I knew I was going to get some pins. So here is my completed pin board. So I will show you at the top. These are all my new Haunted Mansion ones. Um, over here I have just some of my special ones. Um, commemorative type ones. This one in the middle here. This Beauty and the Beast one or this Belle one I should say. Um, it says November. It's one of the ones I got in my Mickey's mystery box. I kind of feel like it's supposed to be like a birth, birth month one, but my birthday's in February, actually not November. So, but it's a really gorgeous pin and I love Belle, but as opposed to trading it, cause I think it's gorgeous. I would actually just love to, to give it to one of my friends whose birthday might be in November. So I think I'm, I'm, I have it displayed cause it's gorgeous, but I think eventually I'm going to have it as like a giveaway to somebody. And I have my Rapunzel pin collection up here, very small. I have my little Alice one down here just because she's so cute. And then on the bottom here, I have Shelly Mae so I can start my Duffy collection. I have my Mad Tea Party Hidden Mickeys. And then I have my very small two, two pin collection of Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so that's my pin board. Um, on my lanyard though, ready to go for the next time I go to the parks, are currently the four pins that I have that I would like to trade at the parks for other things. So that's ready to go for the next time I get there. And then the scrappers that I definitely know are scrappers. I have in a separate pile, which I will not be displaying or putting anywhere. I don't want to get them mixed up. So I'm going to be putting these in a special place so that hopefully I can take them to the parks and trade them for real pins. We'll see. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time with another Disney unboxing video.